Grayson is a light. She loves people, she loves to sing and to talk. Just a lot of energy and a lot of joy. Grayson had her first seizure when she was three and a half months old. When she was three, she started seizing uncontrollably. Her speech turned into gibberish. When she was seizing at her worst, she stopped talking. Grayson has a disorder called tuberous sclerosis complex. It causes abnormalities throughout the body, but within the brain, it causes growth of uh, these structures called tubers. They're not tumors, but tubers. They cause seizures. The first hospital that we took Grayson to did not feel comfortable doing surgery. They wanted to wait until Grayson was older. My husband and I didn't want to wait that long. As a teacher, I know how important zero to five is for language and for development. The seizures were just this block that was preventing her from developing further. We knew that Stanford has some of the best technology and surgeons, and we knew that they had a neurologist that specialized with TSC, and so we wanted Grayson's surgery to be done there. Whenever you think about doing epilepsy surgery, you have to make sure that you're not taking on an area of the brain that's necessary. And in her case, it was important to make sure that we weren't taking out her language. We knew that we were close to the language function because when she had seizures, she seemed to have a loss of language or a regression, and that her development wasn't on track. Because Grayson had multiple tubers around the brain, we really wanted to try to figure out and pinpoint which exact location was causing her seizures. We used a way of placing several tiny little electrodes through the Rosa robotic system. Error in the brain, even a millimeter, is too much. So that laser precision of the Rosa robotic system allows us to precisely target that depth. It really helps us place these safer and in a much more efficient way, where we used to take several hours. We can now place maybe 12 electrodes within an hour. These will target these individual tubers around all her language sites. Part two then is to figure out how to deal with the tissue around the tuber that was causing the seizure. And that's done through an operation called a craniotomy, where we open up a portion of the skull. We then go in to identify the abnormalities. And then we take out the tissue. There's blood vessels all around us. So there's a minefield that we have to avoid. And we're so careful in the planning to get that trajectory perfect down that path that we avoid language, we avoid motor function, vision. It can be difficult to know how much to take. And around her language area, of course, we're all worried we can't overdo it. The area where these seizures were coming from did look and feel abnormal. And after we removed that tissue, it was very comforting to feel around that area that everything felt normal, which was a really good sign. And the EEG on top of it, to see all those spikes quiet down, was an absolute relief. When we were told what could be, we were a little bit nervous. He said that Grayson might not be able to walk or to talk. She might not recognize us, that these things were normal, but that she should regain. We walked into the ICU after not seeing her for a while, and she's flailing her arms, and she's got heart monitors on, and her head is wrapped. And first of all, we couldn't believe that she was moving. And then the minute that she saw David and I, she said, Mama, Dada, I want juice. Grayson's recovery has been amazing. She very quickly regained a lot of language. Her sentences became longer. She started talking a lot more. Every day she'll make a new comment. She'll remember something and I can't believe it. I can't believe that this is starting to come together. What an absolute gift for Stanford and for her surgeons to specialize in her disease and to have this brand new procedure be done on our daughter. What a gift to have her have the best chance at this life.